This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Eyes on Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Today, my guest is Mr. Dave Moskowitz, community and rights advocate. We will be talking about President Donald Trump's directive that will allow employers to opt out of non-cost birth control and issues religious freedom, directions to override anti-discrimination protection. And what I have here in my hand is the actual presidential executive order promoting free speech and religious liberty. This was um, provided on the White House website, and I encourage you to go there and see it, look at it for yourself if you have any doubt, or we don't want to talk about fake news, but this is, was recovered from the, the uh, White House website. Now, there, there are a number of things that this is quite disturbing because it concerns women issues, it concerns uh, gay rights, and uh, many things, and all based on, and it gets its, its start from the religious rights, belief, and moral, and all of those things. We're going to talk about them at length today, and that's why I brought uh, Mr. Dave, or invited Dave Moskowitz with, with me. So Dave, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. I appreciate pleasure. you being here. And uh, now I'm not an expert at this, this subject matter, but I do have concerns for civil rights and the violations and, and people discriminating against others while they don't have a right to. But it seems that this directive or these directives do just that, rob people of their rights and subject them to abuse by others. So let's get into it. And what do you think about this process and what has been presented by these directives? Or do you have any real concerns? Actually, it's, it's a major step backwards and an attack on all the progress that has been made by LGBTQ community in their protecting their rights of equality and uh, acts of uh, discrimination based on unfair and unjust um, legislation. And uh, this directive in particular will allow people to do whatever they want, even outside quasi legal. You know, I am, um, when I was younger, my first time I stepped into Harvey Milk's camera shop in San Francisco in 1977, I believe, mm -hmm. and I was active in the, in the anti-gay teacher initiative, which we, we won, thanks to Harvey. So I've been pretty active in the process and for a long time of work with Cesar Chavez and Robert Kennedy. And I, I was kind of, sh in this day and age, to see this kind of um, uh, directive being a, given out to people, which actually affects everyone. Um, even even a regular person in their hiring of, a, say, a, a, church, a church group that may own, like Hobby Lobby, mm -hmm. and how you behave outside of work, how you conduct yourself, who you sleep with, uh, what you might be doing, even though they have no proof. I mean, it really is quite concerning that there's a, they're going to allow people to do whatever they want to do outside of the law, so and you have no chance, chance of having any kind of challenge back. So we were uh, um, bothered by the Lobby Hobby ruling, Burville versus, uh, in that case. What about that? Uh, was that the start? Was that the shot across the bow? Or was that a strong warning to say that the general public best beware if you get the right people in place, such as we have now this administration? One of the things I find uh, quite curious and, and, and interesting we're talking about morals, and we're talking about values and religious rights and what have you. Isn't it funny that the Health and Human Service Office is not led by anyone now, Mr. Tom Price? He had to resign. Morals and values and, you know, and <laughs> honesty and decency and respect for the law, right? Well, that's one. Jeff Sessions as well, the Attorney General, is one foot out the door, but he felt that his agenda of such as this, I suspect, was more important than his integrity and what he's presented, how he's presented by the, the president of these United States. Very interesting. You have any observations on that? Well, you know, I just, I was watching Bill Maher last night. and uh, You know, he was discussing, even when these, they have this, like, suicide pact amongst the adults in the room in the White mm -hmm. House. And he, one of the questions is, who behind, when you pull the curtain, 
at the White House, who's really running the White House? Who's dictating these policies? Mm -hmm. Where is this coming from? Is it from Bannon? Is it, I mean, is it from uh, Tony Perkins? Really? A, you know, Tony Perkins has a snitch line to turn people in if they're gay, which he set up. Um, yeah, I just, I don't understand uh, who's running the show there. If they say, say if Mattis and Tillerson, all those normal guys go, Kelly, who are we going to have then running these cabinets? Because all the rest of them are now gone. I mean, what, what kind of chaos is this going to descend into when we start getting these like childish kind of, I actually don't think they're childish, I think they're purposeful, uh, uh, just directives that are being issued to appease his base, maybe, mm -hmm. um, but also give people a lot of, I mean, the, the Hobby Lobby thing was, was a Supreme Court decision and it has, has legal bearing, so Hobby Lobby can do what they want now. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a further extension and an attempt to see just how far they can push it. So what concerns me with this, and, and as an observation, when they decide, the vendor or the shop owner or the employer determines that you are gay, I, I ask the questions, how, what criteria do you use? Is it a standard? Is it prescribed the same method to be used by all people or a circumstance? How does one gauge the sexual orientation of another in and, and, and these situations? So it sets a dangerous precedent because it's so liberal that it invites, in my opinion and observation, that it invites a pile on and uh, discriminatory practices without even wanting to. It, it says that you now have the power invested in you by the government of these United States, a democracy, to look at another human being and assess that party of that person and deny them their basic rights. You know, I think that I was just reading a document I got off of GOP USA the other day, and they're looking for these guidance, these guidelines for this process to be uh, enabled. And there is no guidance currently. I don't know that there ever will be any guidance. Mm -hmm. I think guidance will be purely subjective each and every time. I think this is actually to stir a level of chaos into the legal mix. Mm -hmm. and, and as we talked earlier about this being a state, every state, Every court system will have a different response to this, depending upon who sits in those positions. The, the prima facie evidence, the evidence, that, facie needs evidence. To, that needs to be brought at, uh, to the floor to be uh, used in adjudicating a matter. It would be, whose burden worse? It's me who being felt that I've been denied or discriminated against because of my race, or you, for example, because of your orientation or sexually, or anyone else. Where does a burden, uh, who places a burden and where does it lie? The victim, I think, is the one who gets the first right. But. Can you imagine, what <laughs> evidence do you bring in the court? It's the victim. <laughs> what They're evidence? to be the victims. Uh, for me, if, if someone didn't want to patronize or want my patronage, and uh, if I was interracially married or whatever, they would say, I don't like that, especially it taken in the deep, deep south. Mm -hmm. They oppose so much of that. So it doesn't have to be gay. Just simply say, I don't want, like that, so I think you're gay. Now the burden is on me to prove that it wasn't my sexual orientation, but my race. Right. But thanks to Mr. Trump and Mr. Sessions, it seems to be they're now invested in these people. So my big question is, is the religious right right? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, how can you, am I going to have to be dismissive and prove that I'm not gay? To a course, that's just, uh, I don't know how to wrap my head around, where do, where do you begin with that? I mean, my partner, who's a buddy, mm -hmm. where, where I don't have a physical relationship, we're companions for 20 years, we're both fathers, we've decided that, you know, maybe at some point we're going to get married for the full legal things mm -hmm. that can help us tax-wise mm -hmm. and things, And but I imagine if, if we were in another state besides Hawaii, we could be discriminated against. Because someone would assume that we are having a physical relationship. So I have to go to court to prove that we're not, and we're just friends living together. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of that going on out there. And I mean, I don't think anyone should have to prove what they're doing at home. That's really no one's business. Even if your name is Dave and, and Jim on the cake, that doesn't, that's, to take it one step further is an invasion of privacy. 
And I think based on, on I don't know where you go from there. I mean, you, <laughs> this is like a whole new, a whole new landscape that we're seeing of lit litigation. It's a tinderbox of legal litigation that's going to come down the pike, and everyone, and it's going to probably, I don't know how it's going to, I don't know how it's going to play out in the long run when it comes. Supreme Court, we're relying on Justice Kennedy. He's the last one who seems to have any sense. And what happens when he's gone? Now, you spoke about the, the, the wizard earlier. Who's behind this? The wizard who, of who, who Trump is error. orchestrating <laughs> this, this whole effort? So we, we know that the Obama bill, they've tried to kill it, remove it. They failed. But this is still a continued effort to, they're on a path, war path, to undermine and undercut and overturn this in any way they can. So the question is, who is behind it? Well, there was a quote from Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House. Now, we know that by now he should realize that there's some problems with this whole setup. And what did he say? This is a landmark day for religious liberty. <laughs> the Speaker of the House. Oh, it is. So to them, is that a, a, a um, sample or an indicator that we have decay in the American process now in dem in this democracy? I've always considered the evangelical right to be American Taliban in a lot of ways. They want to make you. They have a whole set of rules and how women's rights and how women are to be treated, and pay equality, you know, uh, workplace equality, um, gender equality. You know, I, mm -hmm. I think they're taking us back in time to the mid ages, um, to a period where of a dream. And I think actually the thing that the, with Obama was, I, the, the the night he <laughs> the night he moved into that White House, I was just in heaven and elated that they would be sleeping in the Lincoln bedroom. And I think it drove a lot of people absolutely nuts, who are, oh, are outright, I think, just blatant, hate-filled people. I don't hate to use to just throw the R word around, but, you know, it's out there. And I think there's a lot of discrimination against things that are strange and different and new that comes from a generation that hasn't moved on yet. Mm -hmm. And I think this, to me, I really hope and I'm dreaming that this is a last gasp of a g dying group of people with a dying thought process. And I'm, I'm hoping that perhaps when people, th these issues needed to come to the forefront, and now they are, and we're going to have to face them square on and deal with them, and maybe people will step up to the plate and start taking action to fight this kind of um, uh, legal or quasi-legal uh, action and directives. Yeah, and the question is, can you be uh, exempted from federal law, can you, you know, in, in this process, does this ex exempt businesses from um, the federal law, or does it exempt, because the Obama Act, or the Obamacare, uh, at that time, for about six years and all, it, it provided uh, coverage for birth controls and things of that nature, oh, but now the they're funds. saying no, but it's, it's a funny thing that this, the right wants to say, you we, you, they can't support preventing pregnancies. Mm. Their religion does not religion does not allow that. And then you can't abort your baby. So it leaves it meddles in the rights of women and, and others. So you, you they don't want you to take birth controls to prevent the the birth. And they don't want you to abort. Well, that's so where does that lead you? How, how does that sit with most people? It, it creates one of the most harshest. And, and the, the way the records show in some of the reports now that I've been reading, it will present a bigger problem later. Oh, they're on the wrong side of history, first of all. But, you know, I also am reading here that they have, a, they have Trump's directive to the internal, not to enforce the Johnson Amendment, which barred churches and tax exempt groups from endorsing political candidates, he has now advised them to not to enforce the Johnson Amendment. So they're, they're donating to these political candidates who become people who make the decisions that will determine the outcome of any legal cases in various states, counties, and jurisdictions. 
Um, I, I think that the, based on basically, if you accept federal funds, I, I don't think in the, I, I don't know how the Supreme Court is going to rule. It seems like the Supreme Court has become a political tool or is moving in that direction for the next, this last election was so important. And for the next 20, 30 years, if we could lose, uh, this could be very bad. So, <laughs> so the way this thing is written and the directives are written and how they were proposed, it's an attack on Obamacare, number mm. one. So and they're hell-bent on getting rid of it. So now you as a as civil rights and all that, who do you appeal to? Do you go to Jim, uh, Jeff Sessions? Agent, the attorney general, and hope that he would represent or write on behalf of the the public, of the people that's being discriminated or denied. No, he's the one that's trying to implement this. So we are really uh, in a position right now that it, it just I I hear failure. Mm -hmm. It's 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 going to be an ongoing legal battle, and we seem to have slowed down their machine. You know, his legislative agenda is dead in the water. And um, hopefully that because of legal action taken by ACLU and other individuals across the country, that they'll be able to have a, a long period of time before they can actually, I mean, they're going to affect people right off the bat with this, but I think it'll be a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll hold that thought, and we will take a break. This is Eyes on Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Cox. We will be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. So we do it. I'm your host, Carol Cox. And uh, my guest is Mr. Dave Moskowitz. And Dave is from Waikiki area here, and he's an activist and a rights advocate. So uh, we're talking about the new directives uh, that were sent out by President uh, Donald Trump. And Mr. Jeff Sessions, his attorney general. And uh, a couple observations that I made that this, it gets its start. It's something's wrong with the whole process anyway. Jeff, uh, this is about morals and values and honesty and the fear of God and, you know, righteousness. And he had to resign. The chief, the, the, the director or the head of HHS, Human Health Services, quit because of a scandal of his abuse. Jeff Sessions was also basically the president wanted to fire him or ask him to resign. But his agenda, he's so driven about this and his morals and values that he stays. And so that worries me. Mm. So what do you think the direction will be in the future? Say, say people start ob objecting to people's um, behavior on the job. Say they start refusing women's rights of contraception and turning down people to have a, a wedding in a church and people take legal action. I mean, to what degree um, should people respond and how should they respond? Well, the, first of all, the danger that this presents is in anything, it can be abused. Mm. Then if you have a, an attorney general whose willingness to get this and implement it and erode the... Uh, status of the, Bo the Bo Obamacare, that presents a problem. So you don't have a police policing the situation that they created. So in other words, we, we as the general public, not the religious right or not the Christian right or whatever it is that's pushing this and 
that they are playing to, exactly. we're left on our demise, to our own accord, to deal with these. And unfortunately, who have the money? Well, you mentioned earlier ACLU and a few other legal women voters might intervene, but why should they have to intervene when we have this process? We're in a democracy, and we should be guided by the Constitution. You have a right to believe in what you believe, practice what religion you practice, practice, but you do not have a right to allow it to breed, uh, bleed over into the lives of others. You just don't have that right, in my opinion. You know, I, I was watching another show, and, and uh, people were sort of looking at on the, what it is he's doing, what Trump is doing. Trump is sowing chaos, and he's, he's like a guy who's the producer of a reality show. And every day, it's a new show for him. And I just wonder, if you, what, what's he showing and doing over here versus what's really going on over there? And you try to find out what the sub subtext, what, what really their motive is in the long run. Is it to shore up the base? Is it to cause dissension within people who are in opposition? And so what to do? I remember that in the left. Back in the 70s, mm -hmm. they did a lot of things to split people, divide and conquer tactics. Um, but this, this particular case, I think, will probably end up having a lot of legal challenges. It'll end up having a lot of people on the streets in various towns, and, and it starts to affect them. There'll be a lot of boycotts. You'll see a lot of But there's so much going on right, right now across the board in the country because of Trump. Right. Um, I don't think people uh, are... Uh, trying to focus on one particular issue. But do we want to wait until the chaos triggers this, or do we w hope to have a common courtesy to say in respecting the needs of women in the workplace, the the need to afford them the right? So, because some of them can't afford or pay for birth controls or long-term types of birth controls or implants and what have you. What about those? How do we get so far? This debate has been going back and forth, but this is as close as I've ever seen where mm. people are just completely, in my opinion, violated. Women are violated. Their rights are violated. The employers can be as conniving as they wish. And that poor innocent woman or those women, some 62 million, they say, will be impacted, or as HHS says, 120 million. It's, so something's There's something people in rural there. America that are really going to be impacted who don't have the community that we have like we have here in Hawaii of support and action in a progressive attorney general. Um, I, I'm really concerned about their welfare and people who live out in rural and uh, suburban America uh, in different states. I find they're going to be mm -hmm. at a loss. I, I really I, I don't know what's going to occur with this, but a lot of people are going to have to go. You know, I think all good politics are local politics. And that I uh, find that a lot of things are going to be cut, even here on Hawaii, Oahu, uh, with the budget. And people are going to have to start funding services more and more from other companies. And I don't know, maybe people just need to leave uh, if, if it's... If, leave where? Hawaii? Uh, no, leave wherever it is that it's being offensive to them. But that, that's not the way life is going to, the reality That would be the dream to say, I'm, going to, I'm sick of this, I'm yeah. getting out of here, I'm moving to Hawaii. I was going to say, I should have given you a swig of my coffee and wake up. <laughs> but a lot of people don't have that luxury. Yeah. So. And, and that's, that's the real danger of this, because it's going to broadly affect everybody. And, and uh, some can't afford it, but th this then gives the employer the right to deny you certain medical care because of the religious stance. Uh, There's a legal process you can go through. To what degree that's actually effective? I've been lucky with the EEOC mm -hmm. and courts, but to get the money to get a turn to hire an attorney to yeah. take action, well, to find legal uh, justice groups, uh, Lamba, Lamba Legal, whatever. That's Help another you. show, the EEOC and its uselessness. It's, it really is not effective because if you're creating this massive problem, you're going to have a number of victims who seek to file complaints. But look at the, how the, the EEOC is staffed. It's, not, it's inadequately staffed. So all of those things, the checks and balances or the safety nets that exist that would afford someone the right to go and file a complaint. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to be fortunate to find someone to file on a class action, 
But as an individual, you go to EEOC, you might as well be scratching on the door for 20 days and you'll get nothing. So yes, on occasion, some do get results. You got a, what you describe as a good result, but I think probably in the long run, was it really a good result based on their history? What they do, they hold your case and they write your letter, you have a right to sue and they do an investigation, mm -hmm. but they are short staff. So why are we th basically throwing innocent people to the wolves. We're leaving them out there naked, stripping them of those rights when all that, what causes this is two people or a few people behind the scene that wants to erode away the Obama Care Act. And in doing so, they don't care who they hurt. You know, besides the fact that this is an abuse, I think this is also an incitement of sorts, an incitement because what I see in the future, especially with the upcoming uh, 2018 uh, primaries. Well, having been a nodal activist and active in the anti-war movement, I was in SDS, Stop the Draft Week. I think there are going to be large-scale demonstrations in cities uh, that are going to turn rapidly. I think they want to encounter, have people encounter each other on the mm -hmm. streets, and they use this as an attempt to rally themselves to win one more term of the presidency, if it were to go that far. Here's my concern. I think there's a political purpose. Here's my this. concern. We, we spent the half hour, last half hour, basically, talking about what the, the religious right and part of the Republican Party. The, now, we had an emergency session to hear the rail and its impact and the yeah. funding for it by our state legislatures, who is democratically control. So the question is, why are they, they know this law, our legislators and our attorney general know that this law is, when, why are they waiting to see its negative impacts and not gearing up? Maybe they are, but I've not heard anything public. So why don't our... Does Doug, Doug Chen need a case? Well, we don't know, but we need to know that there are people going to be impacted here. And so no, well, therefore, no, well. our legislators should be convening some kind of session because there's going to be substantial number of people impacted negatively. It's a good question to pose to Attorney General Doug. Yeah. And, you know, well, we're running out of time. I think it's a matter of time. If you have anything closed, we got about one, less than one minute. There will be a gay pride parade in Waikiki on the 21st. Gay what pride a, rate, uh, parade, parade throughout Waikiki Indian and Kapiolani Park. Come down and see the nice people that are there. Okay. And interact with your community Well, thank members. you, Dave. Dave Moskowitz. Nice, nice Appreciate sharing it. our thoughts. It, okay, this is about the close of this show, and we'll be back. If you are interested in getting on our mailing list, go to thinktechhawaii.com. Thank you for joining me on today's show, Eyes on Hawaii, on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks to Jay Fidel, our executive director, and our technical support team, Robert McLean, Ray Sangalan, and Nick Sexton. I'll see you again in two weeks. I'm Carol Cox. Aloha.